There is a motif that this country has always been a nation of immigrants. That is not true. It is not true. Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Nathan Silas and today we'll be discussing a very interesting um, topic with you by Douglas Murray and of course they'll be discussing um, the values of Britain and then also immigration and then looking at um, some of the effect of immigration to the values and cultures of um, Britain. So if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. So guys, without any further ado, let's get down to this video. Nobody on my side, I certainly am not against immigration and that is not what motion is about. And you can reinvent it however much you want, but that's not what it's about. It's that there has been too much. And I would say, like I think other speakers have already said, that that too much did not happen in the 50s or the 60s or the 70s or the 80s. It happened under the Labour government in the 1990s and the early 2000s. There is a motif that this country has always been a nation of immigrants. That is not true. It is not true. For most of this country's history, there was a very homogenous group of people on these islands. And the idea, excuse me, the idea that what is happening now is what has always happened is simply a fib, and you have to look to this. The Huguenots are always given as an example, a very good example, and a group that, uh, that uh, 50,000 Huguenots came to this country um, in, the, in the period uh, of the 1680s onwards. Now, 50,000 Huguenots over the period of years was equal to about two months of immigration in the 1990s. 50,000 was about two months. The Ugandan Asians expelled by Idi Amin, which this country, I think, rightly took in, numbered 30,000 people. 30,000 people by the late 1990s was six weeks of immigration. So my point to you, first of all, is that the speed and the rate matters, and it matters for a reason which I am going to come back to in a moment. But first, let me mention some of the arguments that have come up which do need answering about this. The first is the inevitable argument that the reason why we need mass immigration and have needed it is because there are jobs that British people will not do and we need to import people to do those jobs. Let me say to you as frankly as it is possible to say that is one of the most racist arguments you can hear. It suggests that there are jobs which British people not only don't want to do, but shouldn't do, don't have to do. We don't have to even encourage them to do. Please, you've had your go. We don't <laughs> even need to encourage them to do. But we will go around the rest of the world and hoover up people who are willing to work for nothing because it provides us with cheap nannies and cheap waiters in restaurants and so on. I think it's a lamentable argument. The second argument you can hear, and we had it already tonight, is the argument about uh, the hoovering up, as I would put it, of the, the other end, as it were, of the economic spectrum. That it is the best idea possible that we will travel around the world and hoover up nurses and doctors in Africa and across other regions of the world, that we can take people from the third world who the third world has superbly educated and make sure that they benefit us. Again, I think a lamentable argument. Look, the argument on immigration often comes down to net benefits. Is it an economic net benefit or an economic uh, uh, problem? You can, incidentally, on the material in this, find pretty much a 50-50 divide. About 50% of the studies say that there's a huge uh, impact positively for the country. About the other 50% say the opposite. And by the way, that even goes, Lord Singh, to the study you cited. You cited the UCL study. That same study found that between 1995 and 2011, migrants in the UK received £95 billion more in services and benefits than they, than they contributed in taxes. That's the same study that you cited. Another one that we get told, and we got it from someone on the floor, we need immigrants because they're going to pay our pensions. Ladies and gentlemen, whoever the gentleman is, let me tell you something, a shocking fact. Immigrants get old as well. An amazing fact. <laughs> which, means, which means that if you have that model, every single year you need to import more and more immigrants because you need to support that. It's known as the pyramid uh, or migration model, and it doesn't work either. Look, one of the strange things about having this debate is this. 
Everyone thinks that they have to tiptoe. I'm sure you're nervous about walking through the pr proposition lobby tonight. I'm sure you are because this is an issue which is, is fervid and fetid in all sorts of ways. But one of the oddities about this is that there is complete political unanimity on this side of the House. Complete political unanimity. Jack Straw, who was one of the Labour ministers who presided over that catastrophic period of too fast immigration, now says, he said it in November of last year, that it was a spectacular mistake. That's his words, a spectacular mistake. David Miliband, now Labour leader, says that at the next general election... Uh, if, uh, no, oh, Ed, <laughs> very easily done. Apologies. <laughs> Ed Miliband, now Labour leader... Um, says that if he wins the next general election, which he could, <laughs> he will bring net immigration down because he realises his party got this wrong. He said in September of last year, I want to get over all immigration down. David Cameron, Nadim's party leader, the man who would be properly Prime Minister perhaps in 2015, said in his speech last year, on 25th of March, he said, contra Nadim to your argument, quote, under the previous government, immigration was far too high and the system was badly out of control. Net migration needs to come down radically. That's the words of the Prime Minister. This is not a, 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 an outrider argument. It's what all the main political parties now say. They say it because it's what the public think. 77% of the people uh, uh, in the British Social Attitudes poll last year said they wanted immigration to come down. Almost 60% said they wanted it to come down by a lot. That's the British people's opinion, and the politicians are simply, amazingly, having to try to answer that, and a serious need. Now, I'm aware that the bell has gone, but let me very quickly uh, address the issue, if I can find it, that came up from a couple of people. And this is the key thing I really wanted to mention, if I may have a moment. This issue of our values, I hate hearing this, this we don't know who we are, because quite often it leads to the thing of, we're not anything. Britain isn't anything. Britain never existed. It's not an identity and so on. One of the reasons you hear that is because it is an attempt, I think an honest and a decent attempt by people to answer a real question. When you have migration at the rate this country has had it in recent years, you have to expand and water down your definition of what you are because you have people coming in so fast that what would have been your definitions of yourself stop holding. If you asked somebody 50 years ago, what is Britishness? What, is, what are British values? They would have said it very clearly. They are epitomized in a set of historic institutions, in the institutions of parliament, in the institutions of, of trial by jury and the high courts, in the great schools and universities. They would have said the monarchy. They would have said the Church of England. Why is it now that we have this big, endless debate, who are we, what are we? It's because we want to welcome people, but it's happened so fast, we have to end up doing things like saying Britishness is about fair play or being nice to people. <laughs> Everyone wants to be nice to people. Very few people would say our identity as a country is being mean to people. <laughs> But we water it down because it's what we think we have to do. And in a way, we're right. In a way, we're right. Because it has become very difficult to say what Britishness is or can be or should be for people when immigration happens at this kind of rate. I would submit, ladies and gentlemen, this is something which in your lifetime and mine is going to be a colossal issue. Migration does bring all sorts of benefits. When it comes at this sort of rate, I would argue it also brings some very negative things as well. And one of the things that is, is that people of this country, including many, many immigrants, and I'll finish on this, many immigrants, including first and second immigrant, second, first and second generation immigrants now say, there is a problem with the speed of immigration because it changes the country. It is all very well to say that we are open to people who share our values. But if our values water down and the people who come here come at the rate they have, it is not surprising that we will end up arguing for immigration as an economic thing because we will be giving up our culture, 
we will be giving up our identity and we will be saying what some people now do say, which is that the peoples of Britain and Europe have lost their place in the world. I think it is right for people to have a place they call home, an identity that they're proud of. I think it's for all people around the world and I think it's for the people of this country. And I hope tonight you can vote to say you think that too. Thank you. Wow, that's a very interesting um, video, watching um, Morris giving his thought and opinion concerning um, immigration. I totally agree with um, Douglas Murray on his stand on um, immigration. Because to me, I feel like Britain have somehow forgotten about their values and then therefore because of immigration has bring in people into britain and then therefore those people come with their different um, value system on how they understand things and then therefore tend to influence you and how britain you understand do their things now there's a reason why i say so for instance of course just like how you heard the student talking about um students coming to britain to come and study and then therefore they tend to make the economy to grow of course that is very important but then i think Britain has its own innocent values. We could talk about democracy, we could talk about rule of law, we could talk about um, the right of individual or should I say freedom of um, people all right, living in Britain. But then at the cost of that, of course, people have migrated from their country to Britain for different um, reasons. We don't necessarily have to look at it in terms of students who went there for better, um, higher education. There are people who also migrate to Britain, not necessarily because they come to seek for higher education, but then therefore they want to also live there. But then at the cost of that, it means that they are people of different cultures and then diverse um, values. Therefore, since they find themselves in, a sense, in Britain, of course, they would like to also practice in a sense, whatever they believe in or whatever their value system is. But then, at the cost of that, tend to compromise in a sense, what um, Britain actually stands for. For instance, Nigeria happens to be a developing um, country with a lot of resources in a sense, that God has blessed us with. But then there is something that is happening people migrate there especially people of the higher class so some of the resources that are supposed to be used in developing our country is being used or is being sent to britain but then at the end of the day of course is going to what to improve their economy but then at the end of the day it makes them to compromise in a sense their value system which we know them to be people who are not corrupt but then at the end of the day some of these politicians they take on the money that's supposed to belong in a sense to the people of nigeria take it to the britain and of course the system find a way of get taking these people right and then they tend to recite in a sense in britain and of course the people are fully or the system is fully aware that these people of course they take this money from what that belongs to the people of nigeria but then they find a way of innocent accepting innocent these people into britain and then in the other way around what compromise the innocent the value system of britain to which in a sense britain in a sense, actually represent so at that point in time you could see that they are actually what causing problems in a sense for britain and i am just using nigeria in a sense as an instance and then there are so many instances that we can talk about ghana and then a lot of in a sense, countries in a sense in africa for instance right but because of immigration it makes them to tend to or to compromise in a sense their values and then if you look at it in a sense the other way around then it causes what a threat to the national world security and I'm just using Africa for an instance. And then we also have people who might come, you understand, from the Middle East and different places, you understand, around the world to Britain. And then at the end of the day, they tend to what? To cause, you understand, problems, you understand, for the people of Britain. And that is why you see sometimes, you understand, British values, of course, may not necessarily accept, you understand, when it comes to um, polygamy. 
right yes it may not accept in a sense polygamy but because of you know the people in a sense who lives in africa you know who comes with this kind of polygamy you understand know, way of life go to britain and of course they want to practice that then at this point in time britain values does not support it you see so at that point in time it tends to bring in a sense problems in a sense for the people of britain so we have to look at this in a sense not basically because of the money or some of the things that you tend to want to better the economy but then of course when they travel they in form of maybe probably for tourist reasons or probably for education and maybe probably at some point they may go back i think that is a positive one but immediately they are living there of course they are going to come with their own value system which at the end of the day britain you have to find a way of compromising in a sense eat values in order to get the people you see <laughs> the other way around you cannot practice you understand this democracy and then at the same time you have to understand that it also comes with some kind of um consequences so i tend to agree with um douglas maury you understand in this very um situation so so this is the end of my video if you like my reaction you like share and subscribe if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed and i see you in my next video